Hello, my name is Jason Spitzer, and you probably already know me from my YouTube videos that consist of throwing knives, and anime, swords, general co comic funniness, game reviews, and anime conventions. And I was thinking about it earlier today. It turns out that I've been throwing knives for a grand total of two years. Now, I'm not a little bit over two years. Now, I'm not going to sit here and brag and I know how to properly handle knives. But I am going to show you in the how to properly use them in the sense of a self-defense means. Now knife throwing, I use it solely for sport and fun, sometimes for self-defense when I go into uh, cities like Richmond and I carry a knife on me for my throwing knives the proper way to handle them in a self-defense meet. First off, you must decide if you are allowed to actually even own knives in your state, city, county, or town. And what the law consists of. Are you allowed to exercise them on your property? Are you not allowed to exercise them on your property? Are you allowed to wear them concealed or in the public? Or are you allowed to have them just in your hand. That's what you need to decide. Secondly, you need to decide of what kind of knife you're comfortable with. These were the first knives that I had gotten. I had knives beforehand, but I had lost them. But these are the first knives that I had gotten. They are Japanese kunais. Then came these two knives right here. They're American knives, a lot sm smaller and a lot lighter. And then came three of these right here. Then lastly, I had gotten these big American ones. And I will discuss the differences between these all these three different knives separately. This video will probably be brought, sliced into three separate parts, maybe four. So we're going to first start off with the proper handling of the knife. This is what the video will, this segment will consist of proper handling of each knife. I'm going to use the Japanese kunais because they have the best of both worlds. They are, for every world, they are double bladed and they have a nice point to them and they have a good handle to them, wide hand guard and a ring, but you don't really see many of those. But First off, like I just talked about the law, you need to know what the law is for your knives in your town. So you always, always when you're not using your knives, have them sheathed. Even in your home, because that is the last thing you need is a simple domestic dispute type thing to happen. And they look at your knife on your mantle or your headboard or your couch or whatever and one of them is simply unsheathed because they might think that you're going to be threatened. They, you were, uh, you were going to be threatening them when they came to the house. So you always have your knife sheathed. When you can use them, from what I understand in my uh, my state, is I can have these knives on me, but they have to be in plain view. And the only time I can unsheath any of these knives, or even for the risk factor, you don't want to do this, even have my finger on one of these knives while it's on my belt loop, is when my life is in danger, when somebody that I am with is in danger, or for self-defense. For instance, somebody's physically overpowering me, has a knife or a gun or an improvised weapon. And I can exercise the throwing knife in that aspect as a throwing weapon, not just as a stabbing weapon. I'm wearing a trench coat partly because it's cold out right now, but also to show you how you can get in trouble if you wear this knife inappropriately. I cannot, because of the length of the coat, have the knife where it would be most comfortable, which is on my belt loop here or anywhere around here or even here. Even down there because really nobody looks down there. 
because of the trench coat, it's concealed. If I have the trench coat off, it's not concealed. The vinyl nylon wrap with the Velcro on it, as you see here, has to always be fastened. If you don't have it fastened and you're asked to stop by police, that can look a little iffy. You cannot have a knife with a leather over part that puts into place like this and snaps on. Why? I can only guess because if you are in need of using it, it will be harder to unsnap or unlock a, a uh, leather strap instead of simply pulling up with these, breaking the Velcro seal. Also, it could also mean that this the sheath just simply looks like anything from a flashlight case to a multi-cool tool case to a, to anything that looks non like a knife. So they need to see this. Also, one of the other important thing is always know the blade length. In Virginia and in Chesterfield specifically, I, the blade length can be any length, as long as it is in plain view and sheath. Some places mean blade length from the part where it is sharp, okay, to the part where it is pointed. So if the blade length in your city is three inches, and guess what, it goes three inches and a quarter, you're in trouble. The handle can be any length, the blade length has to always stay within the legal limit. Next, if I were to wear this on my trench coat, I would have to make an improvised strap here, or here, or even on my arm, or somewhere in plain sight. That way they can see it. 